Okay, I get it. I might love these low-res ADS engine games, but I can't expect everyone else does, nor can I build a whole channel on that basis. I need to cover something else, and that's what I intend to do. So, let's look at Projector Face, a high-res game done in the ADS engine. Look, baby steps, alright? Created by Fluic Entertainment, which I absolutely read as fuck entertainment the first time I saw it, the story of Projector Face is as follows. You're a projector, you fall off a chest of drawers and into a pile of clothing, suddenly you have a body and you're off to make friends. Yep, that's it for your intro. You're a man with a projector for a face who wants to make some friends. I've spent more time describing it than the game spends setting it up, which is more of a statement about me than anything. If this is all that's needed, then fair enough. By all means, get us into the game quicker and leave us more time to say projector face because it's fun to say projector face. Projector face. I'll cover the style of the game first, since it's the second most significant noticeable thing about it. The main character doesn't talk, being as he is a projector face, but you get to see his thoughts as well as everybody else's dialogue through these silent movie title cards. And the music, whilst not straight up the piano tune stereotype I was expecting, is suitably old timey in a soul jazz lounge kind of way. If you hang around in the first room, you might think the titles are a bit too frequent and strangely spontaneous, but that's essentially the tutorial area, after that they're quite sparingly used. The idea of a game with virtually no written dialogue fascinates me, but there are so many pitfalls you need to watch out for. Point and click games tend to rely on their writing more than most, and when you can't give a description of your inventory, for example, it needs to be absolutely obvious what you're carrying and what it can do. And that's where Projector Face starts to fall apart, I'm afraid, when the only responses your character has to being given orders are doing an action, shaking his head or shrugging, there's a lot of interpretation and straight up guesswork you have to do. Actually, sometimes you don't even get that, I think that was a bug. It took me way too long to figure out I had to combine a blade with another item before I could use it because it, all it gave me was a shrug like I was the dumbass. It's not helped by the way certain items blend into the backgrounds or look like random debris, you practically have to resort to pixel hunting to gather everything you need. I know I keep saying this, but an object highlighting option would have helped here more than any other time I've said it. I had to consult someone else's playthrough once or twice, and it was almost always because I didn't see an item I had to pick up. Not that it's a particularly complicated interface either, left click to do, right click to unequip an item. If they want to preserve mouse only controls like they advertise the game on, they could use middle mouse or holding down both mouse buttons. It was kind of wonky in LeChuck's Revenge Special Edition, but if you want mouse only controls that'll do it. And then there's the world you inhabit, both intriguing and a missed opportunity I feel. It's hard to pin down the time period when you've got cars, generators, a well and a remote controlled garage door in all in adjacent rooms. What's for damn sure is that this is a crap sack world given all the broken things and holy doors and the brown. I found myself wanting to know how the world got the way it did and the game, deliberately or not, doesn't tell you. At least not obviously enough for my old haggard brain. Do you think we could have a silent film style outside of the usual turn of the century setting? Answers on a postman to the usual address folks. Anyway, it's crap sack enough that nobody seems all that bothered by a projector with arms, legs and a stylish if slightly haggard coat. Because there are people here, as evidenced by all the children you attempt to make friends with, as well as some adults who appear later. You go through something of a gameplay loop, meet depressed looking children, do something to cheer them up, and then scare them off by showing them a horrific film you found on the ground somewhere. Gloom, rinse, repeat, fail to learn that you should check the content of films before showing them to children. Society. There's two other parts to this loop. First, the reels you find aren't complete, you need to find film slides and reincorporate them into the reel before you project it from your projector face and traumatise the kiddiewinks. A perfectly fine distraction from all the item rubbing, although it could be improved by highlighting which film reels are the separate ones, that's not always obvious and it's not too fun to hunt them down when you've made a mistake. I think I'm going to have to make that one my obligatory nitpick of the episode. Second, the entire story takes place in the same town and the rubble surrounding it. How the devs made that not terrible is by opening up new bits as the game progresses. It's not a new technique, but it seems very noticeable here, possibly because one of them is a barrier which literally disappears for no obvious reason. The other technique is opening doors or cupboards or just finding items which forces you to backtrack. Normally a dirty word that, but not so much when your game world is around 10 screens large. It works absolutely fine here. That's the last thing I need to mention actually. This is the shortest game I've covered in this series. For once, I think Steam's report of 2 hours is accurate. I completed it before I got all the Steam trading card drops. And if you discount all the games I've received for free, yes, both of them, this is probably also the cheapest one I've covered at 4 quid. Well, it's $3.99 actually, but that deceptive pricing wankery can go away, thank you very much. I'm left wondering if the game was banking on evoking themes of isolation, longing and ostracization, the admittedly unique silent film style, or on having a name that's far too fun to pronounce. I'll go with this. If 4 quid or your equivalent isn't a lot to you, then this is an hour or two of okay entertainment. 
Otherwise, there's probably another better title for the same money. It might not cost a lot, but a game this short would have to leave a lot more impact, and sadly, it didn't do that for me.